video tutorial is intended to support you in installing the positioners correctly, in recognizing and rectifying problems during commissioning, and in evaluating malfunctions when the positioner is in operation. The Position Master EDP300 and TZIDC are electronically configurable positioners with communication capabilities designed for mounting on pneumatic linear or part turn actuators. Fully automatic determination of the control parameters and adaptation to the positioner allow for considerable time savings as well as optimum control behavior. To set up and connect the positioner and for commissioning, you need to connect the positioner mechanically, mount an add-on lever with follower pin on the shaft of the positioner as well as the mounting bracket for fastening the positioner. The positioning bracket must also be mounted on the actuator. Now you have to set the coupling angle of the positioner. You can change the stroke by moving the bolt with the follower pin. If you push the bolt out, the stroke decreases. If you push the bolt in, the stroke increases. However, the positioner loses its linearity as a result of the increased sign effect that occurs with a larger stroke. This can generally lead to problems as is visible in this example. Therefore, set the bolt so that the maximum control of the positioner for linear actuators of plus or minus 30 degrees in both end stops is achieved. An attachment kit in accordance with VDE 3845 is available for mounting as a part turn actuator. Determine the attachment position, whether it should be parallel or offset by 90 degrees, and mount the attachment kit to the positioner with four screws, spring washers, and washers. Determine the direction of rotation of the connections to the left or right and set the axle with the adapter such that the positioner works within the working range. For the TZIDC, the working range of the positioner is plus or minus 60 degrees and for the EDP300, plus or minus 135 degrees. Mount the positioner securely on the actuator and fix the adapter in place with both threaded pins. The adapter must be attached such that one of the two threaded pins is locked in place on the flat side of the axle. Regulations for the electrical connection must be observed, as well as supplementary regulations for devices for potentially explosive atmospheres or in accordance with ATEC certification. The electricity must only be connected when the power is switched off. Open the positioner and pull the cable through the cable gland. Undo the compression fittings on terminals 11 and 12. Place the cable for plus on terminal 11 and the cable for minus on terminal 12 and tighten the fittings. For flexible cables, you should always use wire end ferrules. Switch the power supply on. Check first that the existing operating voltage corresponds to that indicated on the nameplate. The same leads are used for both the power supply and the output signal. The display starts, and after a few seconds, the current control values are displayed. The regulations for the electrical connection must be observed, as well as supplementary regulations for devices for potentially explosive atmospheres or in accordance with ATEC certification. The electricity must only be connected when the power is switched off. Open the positioner and pull the cable through the cable gland. Undo the compression fittings on terminals 11 and 12 on the right-hand side. Place the cable for plus on terminal 11 and the cable for minus on terminal 12 and tighten the fittings. For flexible cables, you should always use wire end ferrules. If an optional shutdown module is integrated in the positioner, it must be connected to a power supply with 24V DC voltage, as the positioner would otherwise move directly to the safety position. This means that air is extracted from output 1 and air is inserted at output Y2. Turn the switch to position 1 so that the shutdown module is activated. Switch the power supply on. 
Check first that the existing operating voltage corresponds to that indicated on the nameplate. The same leads are used for both the power supply and the output signal. The display starts, and after a few seconds, the current control values are displayed. Oil-free, dry and dust-free instrument air is required for the compressed air supply. We recommend a compressed air purity in accordance with Class 3 of DEN slash ISO 8573-1. For the TZIDC, the pressure must be between 1.4 bar and 6 bar, and for EDP 300 between 1.4 bar and 10 bar. Contamination in the air pipe and the positioner can damage components. Therefore, blow any dust, chips, or other dirt particles out before making any connections. Connect the compressed air connection lead to the supply air connection. For single acting actuators, connect the lead to the actuator at the middle connection out one. For double acting actuators, connect the lead to the connections out one and out two. Depending on the equipment, your positioner may have an additional pressure gauge block. For the auto adjust function, the positioner must first be switched to the manual sensor mode. To do this, hold the mode button and change the mode to 1.3 manual sensor by simultaneously pressing the up or down button. Now check the two end stops by pressing the up and down buttons. For a linear actuator, the displayed values should be between plus or minus 28 degrees with a minimum angle of 25 degrees. If this is not the case, please correct the mechanical setup as described in the mechanical connection linear chapter. In the auto adjust function, the actuator is opened and closed multiple times over a period of several minutes. Please check first whether the process conditions allow this. To adjust the positioner automatically, hold the mode button down for approximately five seconds until adjust linearity appears in the display. Release the button briefly, and then press it again. The display shows a countdown from three, and the automatic adjustment begins. During automatic adjustment, the actuator is opened and closed multiple times to adjust the positioner. The procedure takes up to four minutes. On completion, the positioner switches to operating mode 1.1, and the current operating angle is displayed, and the device can be used. The auto adjust function for the EDP 300 works in the same way as for the TZIDC. The only difference is in the operation via the menu. Now check the two end stops of the actuator. To do this, call up the menu by pressing the right hand button. Use the arrow buttons to select the manual sensor option and then confirm it with the right hand button, OK. By pressing the top and bottom arrow buttons, you can now approach both end positions and check them. For a linear actuator, the values displayed should be between plus 30 and minus 30 degrees. And for a rotating actuator, they should be between plus 45 and minus 45 degrees, with a minimum angle of 25 degrees, and run parallel. If this is not the case, please correct the mechanical setup as described in the mechanical connection linear chapter. In the auto adjust function, the actuator is opened and closed multiple times over a period of several minutes. Please check first whether the process conditions allow this. To adjust the positioner automatically, press the right hand operating button to access the positioner menu. The operating mode menu is called up and the first item, auto adjust, is already highlighted in black. Confirm the function by pressing the right hand button with the function OK. The display shows a countdown from three and the system queries whether the actuator is a rotating actuator or a linear actuator. Select the relevant item using the arrow buttons. The automatic adjustment then starts. During automatic adjustment, the actuator is opened and closed multiple times to adjust the positioner. This procedure takes up to four minutes and is shown by a progress display on the screen. After completion, auto adjust complete appears and the device can be used. In addition to the configuration via the display, you can configure and operate the positioner completely via a computer. This is recommended in particular if the positioner has been installed in such a way that it is difficult to access. To do this, connect the positioner to the computer via a modem and start the ABB Asset Vision Basic software. If the positioner is not hard capable, the positioner has to be connected to the computer via an adapter for configuration via a computer. Select Expert Mode and then the relevant positioner from the menu on the left-hand side. 
Using the right mouse button, call up the context menu and establish the connection. Then select Parameterize Online. Load the current device data. You can see the progress of the download on the loading bar at the bottom left. After the download, the main screen shows the device data such as the device type, serial number and software version of the positioner. On the left hand side, select Easy Setup. To start the function, you must first close all other windows. Now select the type of actuator and whether complete adjustment is to be performed or you only want to parameterize certain functions. Furthermore, the automatic adjustment can be blocked against unauthorized access here. The automatic adjustment now starts as in the previous local procedure. If the error message out of range appears during the automatic adjustment, the measured working range of the positioner is outside the permitted values. This message is the result of an incorrectly mounted positioner. Correct the mechanical connection as described in the chapters Mechanical Connection Linear or Mechanical Attachment of the Part Turn Actuator and start the Auto Adjust function again. Further error messages may appear during the automatic adjustment. The operating instructions contain a list of these messages. In this case, make a note of any additional information displayed and contact ABB Service to rectify the errors. If the positioner is not working and the display is dark, Check whether an operating voltage is being supplied to the positioner. If the operating voltage is correct, the device must be sent to the factory for repair or the faulty components replaced. If no operating voltage is present, check the supply lines. If the display is present and the operating voltage is correct, but the device is still not working, check whether the compressed air supply is correct with at least 1.4 bar. Also check the filter for any dirt. If the compressed air supply is correct, the device must be sent to the factory for repair or the faulty components replaced. If there is an optional shutdown module in the EPD-300, check whether the supply voltage of 24V DC is present. If the operating voltage is correct, the device must be sent to the factory for repair or the faulty components replaced. If no shutdown module is present, check whether the switch is at position zero, as otherwise malfunctions can occur. If the switch is correctly set to position zero, the device must be sent to the factory for repair or the faulty components replaced. If unexpected malfunctions occur during operation, you can perform a short test for the positioner. First check the operating voltage and the compressed air supply as described in the previous chapter. Dismantle the positioner, rotate the shaft in both end stops and check whether the potentiometer is working in its defined working range. The maximum angle is plus or minus 65 degrees for the TZIDC and plus or minus 135 degrees for the EDP300. If the values are correct, the next step is to check the pneumatic module, referred to as the IP module. To do this, connect the compressed air supply and move in both directions using the buttons. When opening out, the compressed air must only escape from the lower output, out 1. When closing the compressed air, must only escape from the output out two. If you do not press any of the buttons, no compressed air should escape from the outputs at all. If the result of this test is also positive, the positioner is error free to a probability of 80%. If the compressed air test produces negative results, the device must be sent for repair or the IP module replaced. To replace the pneumatic module, unscrew the cover of the TZIDC at both Phillips screws and remove the cover. Undo the connection leads at terminals 11 and 12. Undo the four Phillips screws on the cover and remove it. If an optical position indication is present, remove it.
now undo the two torque screws that secure the electronics in the housing and carefully disconnect the upper connector of the IP module and the lower connector of the potentiometer and remove the electronics. The pneumatic module is secured with two hexagon screws. Remove these screws. You can now remove the pneumatic module. Turn it carefully to the right to remove it. Caution! The potentiometer is positioned such that it oscillates. If you do not exercise caution when removing the pneumatic module, the potentiometer can become misaligned. If this should happen, the device would have to be sent away for adjustment. Check whether the three ceiling rings are correctly inserted and are undamaged. For single acting actuators, an additional O-ring is installed in the IP module. Check this O-ring as well, as otherwise the module is not sealed when operated. Now insert the new module diagonally, taking care to ensure that you do not misalign the potentiometer when doing so. Assembly is executed in the reverse sequence. Pull the two hexagon screws in, connect the connectors to the printed circuit board, and set these in the two housing guides. When doing so, make sure that the cables are not damaged. Screw the electronics on, attach the cover, reattach the position indication, connect the supply lines, and close the positioner. To replace the pneumatic module, unscrew the cover of the EPD-300, add Phillips screws, and remove the cover. Undo the connection leads at 11 and 12. If optional modules, such as a shutdown module, are present, disconnect them, undo the fixing screw, and take the module out. If an optical position indication is present, remove it. Undo the four torque screws on the cover and remove it. Now undo the torque screws that secures the electronics in the housing and carefully disconnect the upper connector of the IP module, the lower connector of the potentiometer, and the optional connectors of the pressure option and remove the electronics. The pneumatic module is secured with two hexagon screws. Remove these screws. You can now remove the pneumatic module. Turn it carefully to the right to remove it. Caution. The potentiometer is positioned such that it oscillates. If you do not exercise caution when removing the pneumatic module, the potentiometer can become misaligned. If this should happen, the device would have to be sent away for adjustment. Check whether the six ceiling rings are correctly inserted and are undamaged. Now insert the new module diagonally, taking care to ensure that you do not misalign the potentiometer when doing so. Assembly is executed in the reverse sequence. Pull the two hexagon screws in, connect the connectors to the printed circuit board, and set these in the two housing guides. When doing so, make sure that the cables are not damaged. Screw the electronics on, attach the cover, Reinstall any optional assemblies present. Connect the supply lines. Reattach the position indication and close the positioner.